Hey folks, what's going on? Hope you guys are having a great day. In today's video, I want to explain the differences between the Hobart Air Force 27i and the Hobart Air Force 40i, two really popular plasma cutters from Hobart. And there are a lot of differences between these machines that you won't necessarily see on the surface. So in today's video, I want to point out some of those differences and explain to you guys why I think the Hobart Air Force 40i is a better buy coming in at about $300 more. So let's explain some of the differences and take a look at this comparison chart that I've made. All the information in this video is coming from the official Amazon page for the 27i and the 40i as well as the Hobart website for some of the finer details that aren't listed on the Amazon page. I'll put links down in the video description to both of these machines on Amazon if you want to reference these pages as well. Pulling up this comparison chart here that we made, there are some differences between the 27i and the 40i that aren't so easily seen on the surface. So let's look at some of those and explain why I really think that the 40i is a better value. So starting out with the amp rating, we're talking 30 amps on the Hobart 27i, despite its name 27i, but it's actually rated at 30 amps, and the Hobart 40i is rated at 40 amps. So what does this translate to in the real world? Well, at 30 amps, you're gonna be able to get a 3 8 inch clean cut. And on 40 amps, you're gonna be able to get a 5 8 inch clean cut. Now, keep in mind, with these numbers, they are oftentimes very conservative, especially from very reputable manufacturers like Hobart, Miller, Hypertherm, all of those companies tend to be very conservative on their numbers. So what I mean by that is, even though the 27i says that it can only cut 3 8 of an inch with a clean cut, that is a 3 8 inch perfect clean cut. If you wanted to cut a piece of half inch mild steel with the 27i, you could do it and it would sever the steel. It just wouldn't be that perfect clean cut that you expect when you have that maximum thickness rating from a machine. So the cut would have some slag buildup on the bottom and you would likely be at you know five to eight inches per minute making that thicker half inch cut. So just keep that in mind. These ratings are for the ideal conditions. Oftentimes you can push them past those ratings. It doesn't hurt the machine at all, um, but it just doesn't produce that nice, super clean cut uh, that you know you would expect to see like in a magazine or something like that for advertising this machine. So keep that in mind. But you're talking 3 8 inch on the 27i and 5 8 of an inch on the 40i. In terms of voltage, both of these machines are dual voltage. They'll run on 120 and 240. But keep in mind, as with all plasma cutters, if you run them on 120, you are very limited to your power. Your maximum like 20 amps, and you're going to be cutting basically quarter inch thick steel is really the sweet spot for 120. Anything thicker than that, it's really slow and doesn't work too well. So both of these machines will perform identical on a 120 volt connection. Having the flexibility of the dual voltage is really nice and it allows you to adapt to any kind of work environment. So the fact that they both are dual voltage is great, but you're most likely gonna be running it on 240 volts. So if you're running it on 240 volts, that's when you really start to see a difference, not only in the cutting capacity as we see here, but the duty cycle as well. So if we take a look at the duty cycle, skipping to the bottom, if you're running at 240 volts, the duty cycle of the 27i is 40% at 30 amps. So what does that actually mean? Well, on plasma cutters, duty cycle is measured in a 10 minute period and it's measured at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So what that means is this measurement is this machine running in a 104 degree environment. How long out of that 10 minute period can it run without overheating or causing any type of error on the machine? So with the Hobart 27i, it can run 40% at 30 amps, meaning four minutes out of that 10 minutes, it can continuously run without having any issues. If we bump up to the Hobart 40i, we can get a 60% duty cycle at 40 amps. So not only do we have more power, but we're gonna be run be able to run six minutes out of that 10 minutes at 40 amps. This is one of those specs that oftentimes just kind of flies under the radar, but is pretty important depending on your application. I would say oftentimes most people don't actually push the duty cycle of their machine or get anywhere close to it, but depending on your application, that might be something that you're interested in. And the Hobart 40i is definitely gonna be a more efficient machine and provide you with longer run times within that 10 minute period and have a higher capability. So keep that in mind. That within itself is, is a, a pretty big upgrade in my opinion, and uh, I think is definitely worth 300 bucks. But there's one more thing that makes the Hobart 40i, in my opinion, the, the hands down best buy between these two and that is the Pilot Arc. Now the Hobart 27i does have Pilot Arc, but it's not the full-blown Pilot Arc that you would expect to see in a machine at this price range. It has a starting pilot only. This means that 
when you start the torch, it will act as if it has pilot arc and it will start the arc of the torch. However, it will cut off after a certain period of time if you do not start your cut. So in a way, it does have pilot arc, but only when you're cutting a continuous piece of metal. Now the Hobart 40i has a full pilot arc. This is the traditional pilot arc that you are used to seeing uh, in plasma cutters, where when you hold that torch, it is on the full amount of time you can cut expanded metal, rusted metal, anything that would traditionally cause that torch to cut out from not having a good connection, that pilot arc will take care of and it will continue to cut. So that is a really big downside for the Hobart 27i for me. A, a full pilot arc to me on a machine this price is 100% a requirement. So that's why I, I don't so much recommend the 27i and I, and I think that the 40i is definitely the machine to go with in this price range if you're gonna go with the Hobart brand. So between the two machines, I think the $300 upgrade to the 40i is 100% worth it. However, I do want to say this, both of these machines are made in the USA and they are built to be really rugged and survive a professional environment. I mean, if you guys know anything about the reputation of Hobart, they tend to make very well-priced machines that are affordable, uh, but they're professional quality, they hold up well, they're made in the USA, they have parts availability, you can find them at Tractor Supply and stuff like that, you can find you know, Hobart welder tips and stuff like that, you can find all of that stuff. So they're a really good brand and if you're a professional or someone who likes to invest a lot of money in their tools to get a very high quality tool that you don't have to mess with down the road, I think the Hobart will serve you very well. And I think the Hobart 40i is going to be your best bet of the two. Now, that being said, these machines do boast a pretty high price tag. You know, you're talking $1,700 for a plasma cutter. So I want to say if there is any weekend warrior guys out there who are looking for a plasma cutter on a budget and you are willing to sacrifice a little bit of that build quality to save you some money, there are some options out there that can be dramatically cheaper that are not made in the USA. Now, I don't wanna drive you away from the Hobart machines because they are great machines, but I just wanna show you your options because as that's my job is to educate buyers, to show them what is out there and for them to make an educated decision. So let's take a look at some of the cheaper machines that you could consider that would be along the specs of the Hobart 40i. If price of these machines are an issue and you would consider going with a Chinese made machine, one of the machines that you should look at is the Prime Weld Cut 60. This is a 60 amp dual voltage plasma cutter and we've done a variety of cutting tests with this machine and I'll run some B-roll right now so you guys can see see some of the cuts that this machine has made. But at 650 bucks, this machine has some incredible performance. It's performed really well, and we've been very impressed with the performance to price ratio. Now this machine does come with a three-year warranty, uh, like a lot of the bigger manufacturers like Hobart and Miller and Hypertherm, and they do have parts availability and all that good stuff. So this is definitely an option. Now what is the difference gonna be between something like this and the Hobart? Where is that huge price discrepancy coming from? Well, Hobart, made in the USA, also, a lot higher quality materials. You know, the Hobart, if you're going to be throwing this machine in the back of your pickup truck, using it every day on a job site, the Hobart is going to last a lot longer. It's just going to be more resilient of a machine. It's going to be made with higher quality materials. However, if you're a weekend warrior and you're only using this machine, say, five, six, eight times a month, then something like the Prime Weld Cut 60 will work fantastic and do exactly what the Hobart's going to do for you. So, like I said, just another option for you guys to consider. This machine is a really great value. It's got a lot of power, but depending on your needs, you may want to go with a USA-made high-quality brand. Or if you want to save a few bucks and still have the capability to make those really large cuts and you're only going to be using this machine as a weekend warrior type deal, then something like the Prime Weld Cut 60 can be a fantastic value. So like I said, guys, I'll have links to all three of the machines that we reviewed in this video in the video description on Amazon if you want to check them out. I appreciate you guys watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.